Hello everybody and thank you much for watching. This is me, Mr. P, and in this video I'd like to talk to you about the lab dock that can do this. This is a U-Perfect X lab dock that has 360 degrees hinges, so it allows you to twist the screen all around and convert it into a tablet. The box that I received was a bit of a strange because it was saying a portable monitor on the top of the box. But then I quickly realized, I quickly found out that this is basically a generic box from the U-Perfect company that the using to package the portable monitors. It makes a sense when they recycling the box they already have instead of going and manufacturing a different box. Content inside the box was Labdoc 18 watts power European plug. Obviously you might receive a different wall plug. There was manual and four cables by the company called Ugreen uh, looking from the packaging. It was one mic mini HDMI to full size HDMI cable two USB Type-C to USB Type-C. One is obviously used for, will be used for connecting your Galaxy device to this lab dock. And another one will be to connect this cable to a lab dock and the wall charger to supply power. One USB Type-C to USB Type-A, just in case if you have a wall plug with USB Type-A connection, so you can use this cable to charge this lab dock. Build quality of this lab dock is very premium. It's all metal. I haven't noticed any plastic uh, parts anywhere around it. It weighs just over 1.2 kilograms. Dimensions is 303 millimeters by 209 millimeters by 16 millimeters when it's shut. The screen thickness is only five millimeters. One thing that is hiding behind the palm uh, rest uh, area is magnets. What that basically allows is this screen to shut properly and attach or with the magnet just get it sealed properly then it's not going to open by mistake when you're moving the slab dock around. But because there are magnets right now we have a bit of a problem. You can't open the slab dock one-handed so if you're going to try to open it you need to have another hand behind it just to sort of not allow it to push or just slide across the table so it's two-handed operation required to open the slab dock. Body flex is just a little bit. It uh, doesn't really give me any, any worry about that this is going to be a, a, a bad product. The screen doesn't flex at all because obviously all this metal behind it. Now let's go to the ports. On the left hand side we have one USB Type-C to connect to Galaxy device and mini HDMI. The placement of mini HDMI is a bit of confusing for me but then sort of makes sense that it needs to be put it specifically at that place as there is no room next to USB Type-C and obviously the thickness of the body of the slab dock not allow you to add the full size HDMI. So when you consider have any HDMI connection compared to none, I'd rather go with mini HDMI. One thing I can see that might happen in the future if you're gonna use mini HDMI connection to connect Windows machine or, or Xbox console or PlayStation 5 or whatever, just gaming consoles. When you're holding your laptop like this and when you're trying to type like this, the left hand palm obviously gonna be rested on this place. I'm always gonna end up leaning my hand on the top of the mini HDMI connection. With, with time, it might break. So this is something that you need to consider just in case if you're gonna use mini HDMI to connect the Windows machine or game consoles. On the right hand side, we have the power button, which is very neat and very, I quite like the location of the power button. Usually most of the lab dogs comes with the power button being somewhere on the keyboard area, which I don't like because there is a chance by accident you're gonna press it and it's just gonna shut the lab dock. So you're gonna have to start it again. So on the right, on the side, the power button is a plus for me, followed by the micro SD card reader. It's not a full size SD, a SD card reader, but micro SD, again, same as a mini HDMI, rather have something to read the data. Then you have USB type C to charge only. It's not the data pass through, only charging and a headphone jack for only audio out. One thing you probably noticed, there is no USB type A connection. I use other lab dogs, which has USB type A when I'm using DeX. I'm connecting external hard drives, USB mouse, USB keyboard, USB game controllers. I even done a video just recently where I'm using my lab dock with my phone connected to a 3D printer and controlling 3D printer from a DeX. With this lab dock, sadly, I can't do these kind of things because there is no USB type A connection. Next thing, let's talk about charging and battery. Inside, you will find 10,000 milliamps battery, which is quite decent size and it lasts about six hours in my test when I run the video on the loop and it's run, run for about five and a half to six hours. Using USB Type-C power meter, I was able to measure how much power goes into this lab dock and how much power this lab dock supplying to my Galaxy Tab S6. So it's 11.6 volts at 1.08 amps was coming to this lab dock from 60 watt power brick. So it's not the great uh, charging speed. And this lab dock was powering my Galaxy Tab S6 at 4.8 watts or 0.5 amps, which is 
really slow. From my testing, I found out that once you have your Galaxy device, in my case, my Galaxy Tab S6 connected and my Galaxy Tab 6 screen was on showing YouTube or anything else. And I was doing some bits on my day. The charging actually wasn't powerful enough to charge my Galaxy Tab S6. I actually was losing 1% every two, 20 to 30 minutes. On another hand, when I had the Galaxy tablet screen off and all the bits was being done on the, on the deck, the Galaxy tablet was gaining 1% of power every two hours, which is really, really slow. And uh, if you're planning to use this laptop with your Galaxy device, make sure your device is fully charged and the laptop is fully charged just to be able to use this kind of setup as much as you can. One thing I would like to mention while I'm talking about charging in a battery, this laptop doesn't have any indication or any LED lights to indicate how much power left in the battery. I would like the laptop manufacturers to include this LED light indication for the battery like HP Elite X3 did. When you have four LED lights on the side, you press the button, you have two LEDs out of four lit up, so it's around 50%. Keyboard is nothing different from other laptops I tested. It's 84 keys and it's typing is very, very comfortable. Pretty much is almost exactly the same like other laptops I tested before. One problem with this keyboard is a function. Function keys are always on by default. So instead of keys F1 to 12, F12 acting like F1 to F12, they are actually assigned by default to a specific function, like turn off the trackpad, check the battery life, increase or decrease the volume, increase or decrease brightness, turn on and off the, the backlight, and etc. I don't like this kind of thing. It's not a big deal because I got used to this, but for some of you, when you're working with an Excel or, or files uh, with the files and you need to constantly rename and refresh, etc., pressing function key, function key all the time is a bit of the annoying. When you think about it, what, when you're working on the laptop, what you do the most? Are you renaming files, refreshing website? Uh, I don't know, work in Excel, you need to constantly use F1 or F2 or F5, or you're actually increasing or decreasing volume or changing brightness. What's happening the most? Obviously, you're going to use F1 to F12. So why laptop manufacturers deciding to turn the function key on by default? It just baffles me. One thing is good about function key always being on is F1. The button F1 is to turn the trackpad off. So when you're about to type the long text inside a Word or Google Docs, you just press F1, start typing, you don't press F1 again. So there is no need to press two key combination. Another thing about the keyboard I almost forgot to mention is the print screen button. Why or oh why the UPerfect decided to create the print screen button on its own? It's a bit of annoyance because while I was typing this list that I'm, I'm just going through, the print screen button annoyed me really, really much. I mean, I was fuming because the print screen button is next to the delete button. So every time you're typing and you want to press delete, there's a chance by mistake you're going to press the print screen button and you're going to take a screenshot. So by the time I finished writing this list, I had over 30 screenshots done because I was keep pressing print screen instead of a delete. Now let's talk about the trackpad. At the first couple of days when I was using this laptop, it doesn't feel that good, but now I got used to it and there is a bit of resistance when you're moving a finger across. The key presses was a bit too loud at the start, but now I got used to it and it's very nice tactile clicky feedback just letting you know that you actually press one thing is a bit weird left key sounds different from the right key but it's, it's nothing nothing major just one of the things I wanted to mention palm rejection of this trackpad is not great at all it's pretty much the same as other laptops I tested so the workaround for this would be obviously to press F1 and turn the trackpad off when you're trying to or typing a long text or you just don't need a trackpad but then you want to use a trackpad and type a long text so you can use the a mouse connected to the old Galaxy device or to this laptop. But there is a problem. Like I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, the lack of USB type A, you can connect wired mouse or wireless receiver for the mouse. So only one way you can use the third, the outside mouse, the physical mouse next to you is obviously use the Bluetooth connection. Now let's talk about the screen. It's 13.3 inches, 1080p IPS panel at 300 nits brightness and 178 degrees viewing angle. The brightness is really, really bright. I mean, it's when you, if you're gonna increase the brightness all the way to 100%, everything will be burned out. I'm using around 50 to 55% brightness setup with, with this laptop and I found this very comfortable for my eyes. But if you're gonna go anything higher than 70, you will notice that the, all the picture will get really burned out. And now let's talk about one of the main features about this laptop is the hinges. It's a 360 degrees hinges, so you can convert this laptop into a display, into a tent, or into a portable tablet kind of thing. 
And this is really, really useful because depending on what kind of things you are planning to do, this kind of orientation that this laptop can be put into um, just gives you a bit of more versatility how you can use this device. One thing I would like to mention about the hinges is when you open up like this, obviously all the, all the connections work so you, you have that wobbles a bit but it's all fine but once you close it all the way to a tablet this side of the tablet or this side of the laptop doesn't really go 100% flush so this is maybe this is my unit just one of the things I'd like to mention this gap right here is a bit bigger compared to this one another thing I like about this laptop or more specifically about the feature that this laptop has is OSD it's a much much simpler OSD to use compared to other ones how to turn it is OSD that's all you need to do is swipe with two fingers on this portion of the monitor of the screen and it doesn't here we go it doesn't happen all the time and that's in there you can choose the volume brightness contrast the backlight effect backlight strength you can choose which video input you want to use do you want to use usb type c or mini hdmi you can mute the the speakers you can lock the rotation yes the screen rotates depending on what kind of orientation you have this device there you go, I just turn it around and in about a second or so it's actually going to go all around. You can basically choose do you want to charge your Galaxy device or you don't want to charge your Galaxy device when you're using this laptop. With the charging, uh, it's a bit of a weird thing when you're turning on and off. While I have my Galaxy Tab S6 connected to this laptop and I will turn the charging on, the DeX and the Galaxy device, this is going to be my Galaxy Tab S6, might refresh. You're just gonna blink for a second or so, but if you're gonna turn the charging off, so it's right now charging and you wanna turn it off, you just go down, turn it off, what's gonna happen is it's gonna restart the DEX. So you have a document or game or anything running inside the DEX and you wanna switch from charging to not charging, make sure you save everything, otherwise you might lose. One quick thing mentioned about OSD is when you're using two fingers to swipe down to open OSD, this can be a bit of a problematic. For example, when you have a website open, I'm gonna open the website and we're gonna go into Reddit, best Reddit page, Samsung DEX. What's happening is you need to use two fingers to initiate the OSD. But while you're doing that, DEX will still detect that you're using two fingers to zoom in. So by doing that, there's a chance that the page or game or whatever the DEX is displaying now can be interacted with while OSD is being called in. While we're talking about the screen, I want to mention one thing. I noticed while I was testing with this laptop, there is a little like a glowing effect when I have an app that is completely white or something is DEX is displaying that is white and I turn on the app draw. There is a sometimes happening, I have a, like a glowing effect. This is right now not showing at all. I'm just going to put a photo in this video to demonstrate what you might see when you're using this laptop. Next topic I would like to talk to you is speakers. There's the two speakers above the keyboard behind the four punch holes and the speakers are not great. I would say they're more for reference than for you to enjoy listening to music or watching movies. So if you're planning to use this laptop to consume, consume media from YouTube, Netflix, etc., etc., I suggest for you to get yourself a headphones or connect outside speakers. Currently, this is in the lab dock orientation so speakers facing up and obviously you'll get the maximum performance of the speakers even if they're being bad but what's going to happen if you're going to go right now in a tent mode i nearly dropped it so tent mode speakers right now facing away from you so the sound is going to be not that great on top of already being not that great uh, what about if you're going to go in display mode the speakers right now facing towards the desk so it's going to be blocked by the desk and it's going to sound even quieter or if you're gonna go and use it as a tablet, again, speakers going down and it's basically the sound will be really, really quiet. I was watching a movie just another day on this lab dock and same time my 3D printer was doing a job. I couldn't hear anything what was happening in a movie. Even I had the volume at 100% on the lab dock and 100% on the tablet. For the end, I would like to talk about app limit. This lab dock only allows to have five active apps at one given time. As you can see right now, I have one Samsung internet, app, internet browser open as one app, but if I'm gonna open another four, that's gonna be fine. But if we're gonna open app number six, the most oldest one will be minimized, will be basically closed because this is five app limit. It doesn't support more than five apps. So when you're using this laptop to do more, a lot of productivity, just make sure you're not going over five apps. Another thing I would like to mention is the screen rotation so right now this is in the lab dock orientation but what if i want to have this one really flat and next somewhere on a stand what's happening the accelerometer or gravity what's they call gravity detector something inside there thinks that you actually have right now the lab dock 
in a tent mode and that's why the screen is get rotated bend it back a bit so the screen is all fine i make it flat again and it just rotates again in 180 degrees so is it worth it to purchase this laptop if you're not going to take into consideration the lack of usb type a speakers being a bit of the poor the charging speed to your galaxy device is not that great i would say this is a very really good lab dock for you to consider in purchasing just because the build quality feels premium the screen even with the max on brightness is burned out but when you're tuned in it looks amazing it's 60 hertz refresh it by the way it has a 10 finger in finger finger touch inputs it is really good lab dock for you to consider especially it can do this and that alone gives extra bonus points to this laptop just because you can convert it to a giant tablet you can use it somewhere on a stand and it's going to be your portable monitor you can fold it like this and enjoy a movie this is a really nice laptop for you to consider it's available on uperfect x or uperfect website for 350 dollars i think but you can find it much cheaper on aliexpress i'll leave the links in the description below thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one goodbye